Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Brendan Hauser with Evoke Bike. So I wanna talk about crit racing and getting an eight week tune up to your big event or even getting into crit season, SZN, usually middle of the summer. So before we get into what I wanna talk about in this video of the eight weeks of training, and I'm actually gonna to put together something in Training Peaks that a friend has convinced me. We talk through kind of this whole plan of how could I apply this to a general mass of people where it's actually helpful when we can discuss all the athletic differences that we all have. So whether you're more anaerobic, whether you're more of a low VLA max rider, we, we don't need to get in the nitty gritty of those details, but we can make this very easy to digest and understand. So if you're doing crits this year, this video is for you. Before though, we talk about the eight weeks, and this was the comment that I made to my friend. I said, but do most athletes know they need to have a big aerobic engine or really have their aerobic engine primed as much as possible before they get into a tune-up? You're not training VO2 max uh, just a month before you go into these races or you're not really going to actually improve everything. You'd just be tuning up your VO2 max. And he said, make a video, talk about this. So I have a video already that I'll link to that discusses in detail why you want to have a strong aerobic metabolism for short one hour races where you're just on the gas, off the gas, on the gas, off the gas, doing all these anaerobic efforts. The cliff notes is your glycolytic metabolism produces a ton of lactate, but your aerobic metabolism consumes that. So if you don't know what that means or why this all makes sense, I'm not going to go through it again in the video. I'll link to it below in the show notes and check it out. If you have this big aerobic base, you can make these huge glycolytic efforts and then the aerobic system takes care of all the nagging byproducts that slow us down like the hydrogen ions. What does that all mean? You're gonna have a better hard, big watt bomb at the end. You're gonna have an actual sprint at the finish. You're gonna be stronger than someone who has a weaker aerobic system. So greater fatigue resistance is really good for races, even in one hour events. Now, if we're gonna get into an eight week plan, we need to talk about one other thing. What if you don't have a good anaerobic capacity? Because in these eight weeks, if you respond well to anaerobic training, if you can do anaerobic tune-ups, this is no doubt for you. The one change I would make is if you're not strong in being able to follow surges and hard efforts from other athletes, then I would say in that eight weeks before the eight weeks, so f you know four months before, is when you wanna start actually training your anaerobic capacity, actually train to get stronger. You can't tune up if you're not tuned. Does that make sense? So in this eight weeks, these are a lot of the workouts that I did to turn the corner last season to get ready and eventually win the Masters Nats Crit Champ. So I've used this before for big crits when I was doing more P1 big NRC races back in my early racing days. And these are, are also just really good if you need to tune up for road races. Maybe you've done a lot of base miles and you have two months and you don't have a lot of fast group rides, you need workouts to do lean into some of these anaerobic workouts. And then the last thing I wanna say is, any template is, think of a template as a framework. While you could follow this from day one to eight weeks to your event, use some critical thinking and think about what you're good at, what you're not good at. There's gonna be nuance to every athlete and some people have hard group rides on the weekend. Some have a midweek crit that they could do. Like if you look through this plan and it's, you know, 40, 20 is the threshold on Tuesday, endurance on Wednesday, and then building your anaerobic power on Thursday, but you have a weekday crit on Wednesday when you're supposed to be riding endurance, you'd wanna shift one of those out. Which one would you shift out? It's like, well, do you need to work on more your max power? Or do you need to work on more race type scenarios, which would be more a 40, 20 to threshold? So, what I wanna do is quickly just talk through these and then if you feel like you wanna follow a plan, I made this super cheap, I think I put it up for 30 bucks. Uh, is that right, eight weeks, I made $4 a week? Yeah, so insanely inexpensive. This is not a money maker for us, but I want you to have some skin in the game so it weeds out. Because then if I, I've realized when I make these like $15, I get questions from people that are zero, no actual interest in training. And so this just weeds out. The riffraff will say. Um, 
40, 20 is the threshold, anaerobic seven by 30 seconds. When you're doing an anaerobic seven by 30 seconds, and the reason I pick seven, it's a good amount of time to start at. You could maybe do more, but if you're doing 10 by 30 seconds and actually doing them, it's incredibly difficult. So that's something you would try in your second or third week. Gauge these up or down with, with athletes who, this isn't being mean, but who are poor anaerobic athletes, who, who struggle with these efforts, I might start with just five because by the fourth, they're barely putting out watts anaerobically. Full gas. Do these on an incline. Do not follow the workout model. I've had someone start this and leave their house, and when it says go hard for 30 seconds, they go hard on a downhill. That You're not going to be squeezing the juice and going super hard. And then also rest fully in between your efforts. 4020s to threshold type efforts. Don't hold back energy for the threshold portion. It's threshold that you can do by RPE. As you train, you'll notice you sh- if you are training correctly and recovering properly and doing all the things to become the best version of yourself, you should be able to go from 4020s and see an improvement in your threshold efforts, see an improvement in your how you perform in the third set versus the first set. That's I mean that's what training is. And then on the weekends, endurance and maybe some tempo. But and, and this is where the nuance is, like how much load can you handle? There's nothing wrong with doing two endurance rides. I put a tempo ride in here because if you can handle a little bit more gas, that's better. But it's you got to juggle these a little bit. Um, there's one that's more of like crit acceleration. So really hard efforts followed by a still hard effort followed by threshold above just above threshold like 103 percent 105 percent um continue to build your maximal anaerobic power and then work on some sprints on the weekend you don't have to go crazy like eight 10 second sprints or maybe four of them nuance i have uh, another one that goes into anaerobic power development with a different duration i'm just going to leave it at that you can figure that out i don't want to give away all the tricks for those people that do decide to buy this and then sprint work of different durations you've heard and you will hear riley pickerel's coming on from israel premier tech true sprinter you know hey what durations actually matter five second ten second twenty second I just did a podcast with, I'm going to blank on it and I won't waste your time. Uh, athletes said 20 seconds is the most important. I never look at or judge an athlete by a one second max watt. One second does nothing. You could have a great one second, but what if you degrade very quickly over the next six seconds? 10 seconds is five to 10 seconds is definitely the minimum that I ever look at. So there's a longer duration there and then a rest week. And then this is where I think the plan really shines. And of course, I'm <laughs> I'm biased. I put it together. Go through another week of training. You definitely want to work in a fast group ride when you are three weeks out and even one week out. I have two workouts on a Tuesday that you would pick one based on your rider type, a tempo, and you'll see how to take off the gas. You do way more eight weeks out and seven weeks out and six weeks out than you do with just three weeks to go or two weeks to go. Uh, I do have a crit sim that is, I always look at, if you look at amateur crits um, and especially cat one, two crits, the first nine, it depends on the crit, obviously, like the first 10 minutes is ham. It's going to settle into some cadence, even if there are other attacks, but everyone goes so bonkers in the first 10 minutes. This sim reflects that. And it's not that you have to follow this, you know, you don't have to put this on your computer, but just looking at the workout file, I made it a two and a half hour ride. You can see how I go trains for some of these efforts. And then obviously keeping the endurance going and with two weeks to go, like meaning, you know, if your race is on a Saturday is where I put it, not the Monday right before, but the Monday before that, I'm only going to do two hard workouts that week. One's going to be on a Tuesday. One's going to be on a Saturday. And that way you can, if your group ride is super fast and really hard, like you're a cat three and it's ones and twos do that. Otherwise I would be doing more of the sim again, or 40, 20 is the threshold workout or a 30, 60, 90. There's a lot of options. And that's why I put a lot of options in here. So you have options that you can take, or you can just follow this. Like I make it, I say fast group ride or X, Y, and Z. 
And then lastly, the week before the race, I do what I've done on almost every race. If um, it just gets me primed and ready to go, and I've talked about it in a million videos, that taper is very quick within five days before the race. And then if you have a different taper that you feel more comfortable with, that's something that you'll want to do. But mess with that on some B races beforehand. So this video, it walks through how you can get ready in eight weeks. Hopefully you understand also that you need to get ready to get ready eight weeks before that. So 16 weeks out. So four months beforehand. This is what training is. And so now even more so if you're new to cycling, you understand, okay, this is why people are doing base miles six months before a big race, right? I'm doing stuff in training now for in June. I'm doing stuff in training now. Yes, for in spring, but it's setting up everything to move forward so I can move through these blocks of training most effectively as possible. I really hope this video helped you out. If it did, tell a friend. If you're listening to the podcast, please leave us a review. If you are on YouTube watching, what's up? Please subscribe to the channel. And if you want to go and help us out even more, become a member. There's different tiers. And last thing, the newsletter, we are putting in a lot of just exclusive content there, more musings, reflections, thoughts, things that don't really belong on YouTube or the podcast. And maybe they'll get on the blog at some point, but a lot of resources for free. We hopefully can help you evoke your best self on the bike. Looking forward to seeing so many of you again in 2024. Crush it. Let's go.